cafe. Miss Chen turned to Mr. Ji and informed him that she didn't think they could make it work. Ji Zekin asked if he could find out the reason why. At this time, his head, the demon asked if he saw himself in the mirror, because he is a scumbag. That's why every blind date ends like this. But the angel answered that it's not like that and no one thinks that way. He tried to push those thoughts away from him. Miss Chen noticed a child playing with white flags. She stood up and explained that he was perfect from any angle, but she was too young to take responsibility for a man with a child. Those words came as a great shock to him. He didn't understand what the hell a child was or why he had one at all. But as soon as he turned his head towards the child, he began to guess. His name is Ji Chen. Despite all his dreams of starting a family, he's still single, and it's all because of his looks. He approached the little girl and asked what she was doing there. He asked if he told her to stay home. After all, he said he would be back soon. This was his eighth blind date. He'd hoped he'd finally have a soulmate, but this baby had derailed his plans. The baby explained that he was nervous about going out, and she was afraid he'd fail again. So she decided to support him like in the cartoons. This is Doris. He bumped into her on his way home from work and decided to take her home. Her father patted her on the head and asked her if she knew what a blind date was. She came over to encourage him. She was learning fast, and she had only recently learned to write. Doris thought she was being praised, but she wasn't. You could tell by looking at her abilities that she was a witch. The little girl was using magic. Doris informed her father that he might not thank her, and then added that when they returned she wanted to eat that food, the so-called takeaway. Chen reported that he had asked her not to use magic in public, but still agreed to go home. What a way to meet that witch. Perhaps we should start with the events of a week ago. Five days ago. Finally home, because he'd been working so hard. A friend saw him starting to pack, asked him if he was leaving, to which G replied that yes, at least it was less work that day. He informed everyone that he was leaving, and they would see each other next week. The girl informed that Ji Chen was the best guy in this company, reliable and determined. The other one asked her to come down to earth and asked her not to fall for appearances like the others. At the same time, Ji was on his way home. He couldn't believe that it was already the weekend, and he would be able to at least finish the game. Suddenly his phone rang. He asked his friend what was wrong. Lu told him that the good news was that he had found him a girl. This is the eighth one. If he flies this time too, he'll definitely need to go to the monastery. He thanked Lu, but he doesn't believe in such a thing. Lu kept saying that Ji should be nice to him since he's a fellow countryman. He's been working since he moved here, so it's Lu's responsibility to take care of him. Chung should go out more often. He's sitting in his shell, hoping to find someone. Lu said goodbye to his friend as he has a buddy meeting there. Ji jogged along at a brisk pace, but then stopped abruptly and didn't realize if it was just him or not. He turned around and looked at the box where the baby lay. He was confused, not realizing what the baby was doing here. When the baby woke up and mentioned the baby brother emitting magic, it raised even more questions. Doris turned to him, asking if he would take her home. She really hoped so, for she had been waiting for him. That's how he and Doris met. It was from that moment that his life changed significantly. He couldn't believe what she had said. At the same time, Doris didn't understand why he was silent. Chen looked at the little girl, trying to understand why she looked so dirty. Maybe she was an orphan, homeless, or just ran away from home. Sitting next to her, he asked what she was playing at, pointing out that if she didn't come home, her parents would be very alarmed. The man questioned whether she had parents. She replied that no, she did not. Doris couldn't understand why he wouldn't take her with him, since he had been so close and clearly visible yesterday. Doris's memories then traveled back in time. The little girl felt lost, as she still could not find a suitable place to live. But suddenly she heard a meow. She watched as a couple approached that kitten and started discussing to take it away. The man asked the woman to stop, reminding her that she was incapable of taking care of herself. However, 
they were overcome with compassion and decided to take the kitten to their home after all. Now the little girl thought about how animals find homes and care for themselves like this. This moment closed her memories of what she had experienced. Doris couldn't figure out what she'd missed. But then an idea came to her. She cried and kept saying that she was hungry and tired and had nowhere to go, so she asked her brother to take her in. She also meowed at the end. Chen reported that it was as if he was trying to get divorced. It must be the handiwork of professional swindlers. Ji couldn't understand how they could send such a small child. He turned around and replied afterward that they couldn't cheat him, so they should look for another idiot. The little girl screamed for him not to leave. She wanted to run after him, but as soon as she stepped over the box she was lying in, she accidentally got caught and fell. She began to tell him how she had been waiting for him all day and how happy she was to finally meet him. Doris introduced herself, saying her name was Doris and that she was a witch. She told him that a few days ago she accidentally touched a magic circle and ended up in their world, and now she can't go back. Doris shared that she had to sleep outside, praying every day to find a way to get home as soon as possible, and then finally she met him. The little girl had seen him many times. In her eyes, Chen was the only person with a magical aura, and she couldn't understand how that was possible. His presence seemed pleasant and kind to her, but she lost sight of him in the crowd, so she decided to just wait for him there. And so it happened. As Chen hesitated, Doris decided to ask him if he would like to shelter her now. To this question, the man answered in the negative. He couldn't believe what else was magic. Children always fantasize so much after all. It looked like she was a waif, and that made Chen think it was best to turn her in to the police. This decision broke the little girl's heart, and tears flowed down her cheeks. But suddenly his gaze fell on the bloodstain on her lap. This discovery made him slow his steps and look more closely at her. The little girl cried even harder, and Chen felt that she really needed help and care. Now Ji felt guilty. He told her that they would go home, he would feed her and treat her wound, but he was so generous only now, and the next day, he would see her off. His remorse drove him to act this way. Doris was very happy. She would be very, very well behaved. On the way home, she would tell him how cool she was, because not only could she use magic, but she could clean, make blankets, and serve dishes. She can also help him set up potion bottles and is good at catching lizards. All this time, Chen only agreed with her. He didn't understand what he was doing since he didn't know how to handle children at all, his childhood. Little G told his mother that in kindergarten he said that he wanted to be a wizard. But everyone laughed at him. But it is cool to be able to do magic. He wants to be like them so he can protect his mom. His mom then patted her son and told him that he will definitely be able to do everything. She believes in him. After a while, his mom got sick. Little G kept crying beside his mother's cot. She asked him to stop crying after all, she just wanted to get some sleep, to which the boy only replied that she was a liar, that he was being lied to, that if mommy closed her eyes, she would never wake up again. His mom replied, how can she lie to him? She will sleep. In the meantime, G should have a good life. In the future, he will meet new family members and will not be lonely. But her heart stopped and she fell asleep. G grieved for her very much. He went to the window, gazing pensively into the night sky, and remembered how long it had been since he had had that dream. Perhaps it was because of all the talk yesterday about magic. He thought about how every child dreamed of such a thing, of a world where anything was possible. He sighed with a note of disappointment, realizing that there was no room for magic in this world. But as soon as he returned to the room, his gaze fell on the little girl who seemed to be using magic with ease. His heart sank with surprise and disbelief. Doris greeted him and explained that she had just decided to clean up. G felt confused and began to suspect that perhaps it was all a dream. Suddenly something fell and he stirred, asking what had happened. Doris easily explained that it was just a small mistake, nothing serious. G quickly walked over to the Nintendo Switch which was no longer responsive. His heart clenched at the thought that he might have lost his favorite console forever. 
He turned to Doris and smiled embarrassedly and asked if she was really a witch. Doris smiled back and confirmed that she was. Then, to demonstrate her power, she used magic. For G, it was a shock. His view of the world changed the second he saw the marvelous display of magic in front of him. It was truly unbelievable, and he realized that magic existed. He now felt stumped, not knowing what to do with this little girl. G thought about taking her to the police station, but he was confused about how he would explain where she came from and what to say in response to the authorities' questions. Besides, he realized that to chase her away would be too cruel. He turned to her and informed her that she could live there until she found a way to return to her world. But she must not interfere with his routine. Doris was happy, for he had decided to take her in. Late at night, when the TV was on, he asked her to move away because she was blocking the screen. Doris asked in amazement what this huge thing he called a television was. It was a startling discovery to her, as it seemed to have a little person hiding in it. G explained that they were just pixels on the screen, and asked if witches weren't supposed to be stronger, and if they shattered like glass. He brought it up to show Doris that the world around them was a little different than she was used to thinking, and that not all things were as they seemed at first glance. For example, he could tell her about the marvelous adventures when they had joined the spirits to save the world and fight villains. But Doris continued to look the same as before, without the magical transformation. The little girl was outraged, shouting that he was underestimating her and everything he said was a lie. In turn, she decided to teach him a little bit to make him realize how wrong he was. With her magic wand, she began to pry him off the couch and all the objects that were lying around. Doris asked if he realized how cool she was and how much more she could do or not. G asked her to stop, because he could vomit at any minute. She landed him so abruptly. The little girl apologized for not moderating. They always said she was bad at magic. Chen informed that she was a super-duper magician and couldn't understand who the little girl was talking about. He reasoned that it was getting late and it was time for the kids to go to bed. If she stayed up late, she wouldn't grow up. The guy only wanted her to go to bed so he could get some rest. Hearing his words, Doris informed him that she would go to bed then, while she herself thought he was so good and cared for her so much. Her place would be in the living room. But looking at her clothes, the worthless adult realized that the child had not washed. He asked her to stop and explained that she needed to shower first. He wondered if she could change into clean clothes since there were no baby clothes at home. To which Doris replied that she couldn't. What about the stories about her being all-powerful? If he mentioned it again, she'd have to suffer again. Even though he had promised to shelter her, it was harder than it seemed. G turned to Doris and told her that the next day they would go to buy her new clothes to make her feel even more comfortable and confident. The next day, they went to the clothing store. The little girl enjoyed trying on different outfits and costumes, going through them looking for the one she liked best. Once they got to the cash register, but saw the amount to be paid. He didn't understand why it was so expensive. It's even more expensive than the cost of the games. The kids are real spin-offs. Doris was happy. He gave her a place to sleep and new clothes. He's her benefactor. The payment went through, the seller gave them their things, and asked them to come again. G only wiped away her tears. Walking down the street, Doris asked where they were going next. In response, Chen asked in surprise if she was already tired since it was time to go home. She took his finger and replied that she wasn't tired yet. G noticed that she seemed so happy, just from wearing new clothes. Suddenly, they heard a girl screaming, reporting that her bag had been stolen. G walked over to help her up and asked how she was feeling. At that time, the little girl stated that she could give the girl her things back. Doris started conjuring, which couldn't help but attract G's attention. He quickly went over and covered for the little girl, explaining that it was just childish tricks. He insisted that Doris not use magic on the street, as he didn't want anyone else to see it. The man who had stolen the bag was enjoying his loot with an expression of gloating. Doris heard G reporting the incident to the police on the phone pointing to the intersection of Tianyao Street and clarifying that the girl's bag had been stolen. 
urgently asking them to arrive at the scene. The little girl couldn't stand it and suddenly burst into a run, vowing to return the stolen bag. G, reacting instantly, grabbed her by the hood and lifted her up, preventing the girl's attempt to escape. He tried to explain that a pair of legs was no match for a motorcycle engine. But Doris insisted, claiming that the villain was now running. Her words sounded like orders for the villain to stop. But G couldn't stand it and took the bike to let Doris sit on the back. Asking her to hold on tighter, he decided to let her feel safe. The little girl was just happy, feeling the wind in her face and the joy of the sudden adventure. G, on the other hand, though he realized that his act might seem strange, was willing to do anything just to see her smile. G looked tired, and Doris wanted to help him, but he asked her not to use magic. Later, however, she realized that she could use magic secretly to support him. So she did, stealthily adding speed to the bike with magic. G was surprised and didn't realize what was happening, but he felt his speed suddenly increase. At the same time, the motorcyclist claimed that it was impossible for him to catch up. But as soon as he turned his head, he saw G, who was very close. A moment and there was a collision which caused a minor traffic accident. The police quickly arrived on the scene and arrested the robber who was trying to escape. G rubbed his neck, for it was very sore. He asked Doris to be more precise when using magic, for she was harming her own allies. The little girl replied that it was a mistake. She didn't calculate her speed. The girl thanked for the bag, which was returned. Even though magic is out of control, it doesn't bother her in the slightest. He took out his phone and wrote a message to Liao Liu's acquaintance, Miss Chen, with a proposal to meet at the new cafe the next day, to which the latter responded positively. Ji informed the little girl that he had to go to work tomorrow and a blind date afterward, so he would be back late. She could watch cartoons, but not use magic to make a mess at home. The little girl didn't understand anything, whether it meant that Ji Chen would leave, what was a blind date but she definitely decided that this was her chance to repay her benefactor. The next day when Ji Chen left, the little girl decided to surprise him and tidy up the house. She set about cleaning with full determination. However, after all her efforts, the dirty clothes were folded and the floor was still wet from the morning rain. Despite this, Doris thought the house looked perfect and hoped that Ji would appreciate her efforts. Deciding to distract herself and relax, Doris decided to watch cartoons, as she was very tired after the day. The time was getting close to evening, and she was beginning to worry about when G would be back. She was very bored alone at home. She had spent a lot of time alone before, too, but she had never felt this feeling of loneliness back then. It was something new and unfamiliar to her, and she couldn't understand why it bothered her so much now. She had heard a man on television thanking everyone for supporting him because it was only with their support that he had been able to succeed. Doris wondered if people always cheered others up like that. She remembered how, in the morning, G had said he couldn't fail. She didn't understand if he had something important to do or why he was saying that. That's when she decided that she should support G, too. From the aura, Doris immediately recognized where G was. It turned out to be a cafe, which was where they had agreed to meet. Not finding him inside, she decided to use the white flags they used as a communication signal. Waving them, she caught the attention of Miss Chen, who immediately realized it was a sign from Doris that Ji was nearby. Ji, not noticing what was going on around him, turned to Chen, asking if she was okay, and asked her to drink more slowly, showing concern for her well-being. The little girl did her best to support him in this difficult moment. Miss Chen reminded him that he had talked about being single and unmarried, but Ji only replied that he had been living alone for years. It was a moment where past and present collided, causing some tension in their conversation. Miss Chen explained that he was excellent at everything, but she was young and didn't want a relationship with a man who already had a child, so she decided to leave. Doris couldn't understand why he didn't tell her that he had a child. She wondered if she had succeeded in getting G interested. She could only wonder what answer he would give to that question. The communication was going so well, but it was ruined. Upon returning home, G noticed that his clothes were folded. 
He asked Doris if she had taken them, because he had hung things up to dry before going out, and they weren't dry yet. On the surface, there was a misunderstanding which disturbed the favorable atmosphere which had prevailed between them. Moving on, he continued to not understand why it was so wet. Maybe the faucet was leaking, but as soon as he opened the door, he was shocked. The whole area was overgrown with plants and soggy. He wondered if these plants were another of Doris's handiwork. He felt like he couldn't figure out when this messy little muckraker would calm down. Doris asked him not to be angry, promising that she would clean up the mess. Noticing the mess on the table, he asked her what else it was, to which the little girl immediately ran to the table and explained that she would clean it up. She spent a long time trying to make the prettiest little flag to cheer G on. G calmed down a little and asked Doris to be careful that she didn't hurt herself with the scissors. He realized that her activity could be dangerous, but he also saw that she was doing it with good intentions, so he was being patient and supportive. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. As soon as the door opened, a man appeared who immediately began to insist that Ji Chen tell him about his child and why he didn't know anything about it. This unexpected visit brought excitement and bewilderment, and Ji was unprepared for this turn of events. The little girl heard some noise and ran out to them, grabbing Ji's leg. She looked at him curiously and asked the man who he was and what was going on here. After a while, they sat together and had a treat. That man who had caused so much excitement turned out to be Lu Jin Yi, Ji Chen's longtime childhood friend. Meeting Lu brought new impressions and emotions to their ordinary life. The little girl was clumsily trying to eat with chopsticks, but she wasn't very good at it. G noticed her soiling herself and went over to help her get through it a bit. He took a napkin and gently wiped the stains from her hands. Doris, surprised at this unusual way of eating, wondered how she should eat it, considering it was her first time trying such food. While the little girl was surprised and interested in the new experience, G was probably already resigned to the idea that such moments would become the norm in their daily lives. Watching all of this closely was Lou. He watched them closely, especially Doris's efforts to help G with the dishes after dinner. G noticed that she hadn't rolled up her sleeves again and pointed it out to her. He explained that if she got sick because of her carelessness, he would have to take care of her, which was not a desirable outcome. It was a show of his care and concern for her well-being. Lou insisted that G come up to him. He seriously asked his friend to tell him where Doris was coming from. Otherwise, he declared that they would no longer be friends. G replied that he had already said that he had temporarily sheltered the homeless girl. Lu continued to probe and asked if it was a mistake of his youth. Chen asked him not to spread such rumors and explained that Lu was judging him by his own standards without considering all the circumstances. The childhood friend informed him that since he was so good, he should adopt her. Then he wouldn't be able to go on blind dates. The friend suggested he shouldn't be a kid. He wasn't getting anywhere. Killer aura. Lou explained that he wasn't really interested in marriage or dating and was only going on them because of his aunt's last wish. Those girls must have sensed his indifference too, so they rejected him. Otherwise, who would refuse such a handsome man? Lou is the best at dating girls. Lou was beginning to realize that G was doing quite well as a caring father and even found undeniable evidence of it. He saw how G put his soul into caring for Doris, and how she blossomed under his caring attention. Meanwhile, Doris, not realizing why they were taking so long, was bored, and decided to do something to entertain everyone. She decided that she would bring them tea and some snacks to make their time together even more enjoyable. She was just getting to the door when she heard their conversation. Lou was asking if he didn't like being a babysitter, should he focus on taking care of her. To which G asked, who likes it here, and if a friend can be serious for more than three seconds. G explained that she is annoying to death, every day is a mess. Lou thought he kept lying, it's all temporary, he'll send her out soon. The evening of the next day, G came home, he reported it. Putting the shopping on the table, he appealed to Doris to come soon for he had bought her a cake. But there was silence in reply, which alarmed the man. 
He didn't understand where she'd gone. He started calling and asking if she'd been seen or not. Not in the house. And at work, she did not come to him. Then where to do the little girl? For a minute, he had the thought that she was back in her world. After a while, he was still sitting on the couch playing his favorite game. He enjoyed the quiet of the house, no one making a mess or spending his money. It was a beautiful thing. But something was stirring within him, and he could not understand what it was that was causing this feeling of uneasiness in his heart. Perhaps it was the sense of emptiness that Doris's absence had left, or perhaps it was just the strange discomfort of the unusual stillness and silence. He looked at the cake and his memory flashed back to Doris telling him that she was so eager to eat it. That image triggered in him many memories of the little girl. Every detail of his surroundings reminded him of her. Her clothes that remained in his apartment, and even her toothbrush on the bathroom shelf. All these little things only increased the longing and desire to return to her. He couldn't sleep all night. The demon told him not to think about her because she was already gone, to which the angel said that she was so tiny and her magic was unstable, whether she was able to return to her world. The demon kept saying they were so eager to get rid of her so they should be happy. But it's raining outside. What if she freezes to death? The demon kept reminding her that she was a witch, to which the angel explained that he was looking for excuses to forget her. If something happened to her, his conscience would be at peace or what? Now G was no longer asleep. He took his jacket and set off in search of her. In the rain, the little girl was diligently collecting sticks so that her helpers could build a small wooden house. With effort she succeeded, and a small but sturdy shelter stood before her. This cabin became their new shelter. Doris thought it looked beautiful, much better than the previous shelters. Perhaps it was a sign that they would get through any hardship together, no matter what happened. She left and G probably should have been glad of that. He tried to be kind and caring to her, but she chose not to stay and get in his way. Perhaps she thought it was best for him. However, a strong wind had picked up, and now the little girl was starting to get cold. This reminded G that even if he thought that leaving her was the best solution, it didn't mean that she didn't need help and protection. At this time, G was frantically running in the rain, desperately searching for her, it was unclear to him where she could have gone eventually. He looked through every corner, trying to find any trace of her presence. In the middle of the garden near the houses, he noticed small spirits that seemed to be trying to show him the way. This signaled that he was on the right path, and G headed forward again, trusting in their help. He realized that he had to follow them, and followed them to the wooden house. When they got there, G called out to Doris. The little girl appeared in front of him, and he quickly threw his cloak over her, asking why she had run there. In response, the little girl innocently asked if she hadn't gone far enough. G was shocked at such a question of hers. The little girl informed him that she would not be in his sight anymore, and as soon as the rain was over she would go far away. G asked what that meant, and if he had chased her away. The little girl explained that she accidentally overheard him talking to Uncle Lou, but it was okay because she knew that she didn't like people, that she always got into trouble and gave him a hard time. The principal also wanted her to leave because her uncle and aunt were not going to adopt her, but the principal is a bad person. She didn't care about the little girl. G remembered his childhood. His father asked how old he was, that he was still sleeping with his mom. Because of him, he was back in second place. His father said G was giving him nothing but trouble every day. His wife was getting worse, and if G wasn't born, that she wouldn't leave him. Little G cried with words that he wanted his mommy. When his mom died, people started saying what a tragedy it was that his mom left at such an early age, and his father didn't take care of his son. Even other relatives didn't want to adopt him either. The little girl kept saying that G was a different person, that he was kind to her, and that's why she didn't want him to be unhappy because of her. So she decided to leave. These words affected G deeply. He couldn't understand what he was doing. He had once been abandoned by himself and was alone. So why hadn't he noticed the situation this little girl was in before? He tried to convince himself to forget about her, but wondered if there was any difference between him and the person who had abandoned him. 
Remembering his friend's words about adopting the little girl, G felt that this could be the solution to their problems. He turned to Doris and asked her if she wanted to come home with him. G explained that he wasn't really annoyed with her, and he was just afraid of embarrassing himself yesterday. So he said a lot of hurtful things. He sincerely apologized to her for his words and actions. Then he added that she could decide for herself whether to eat the cake or not. But if she wasn't home, no one could eat it, and the apartment would become too quiet. In response, Doris asked him if it was true that he didn't hate her. G assured her that it was not so, and suggested that she should not stand in the rain but go home with him. The little girl gladly agreed, and they went to their common dwelling. Doris, somewhat puzzled by what had happened, asked if she could have another piece of cake the next day. G, trying to comfort her, replied that of course she could. It would be his way of making it up to her. This statement caused the little girl to burst with appetite and joy. Upon arriving home, G asked Doris to take a hot bath so she wouldn't get sick. As they rode the elevator up to their apartment, Doris stayed inside while G got out to walk her to the door. She felt perplexed when this child appeared in her way again. A question arose in her mind. Would she become a source of calamity as Xiao Yue had predicted? Or was it just an accident? However, in the end, the one who fell ill was G himself. This fact further confused the situation and made her wonder about the possible connections between the events. Two weeks later, G was throwing out the garbage when suddenly a girl who was getting off the elevator came up to him and noticed G. She approached him and asked him if he was the one who had helped her then, and what a coincidence that he also lived there. Thinking back to her, he realized that he was the same girl who had her bag stolen recently. Tang Yunying said that she had recently moved to the area and was going to work at an elementary school nearby. Asking questions, he wondered if it was too difficult to work as a teacher, given his perception that young children could be very clingy. Doris, as if stuck to G, followed him everywhere, even to the bathroom. He couldn't understand why it was so important for her to be by his side at all times and felt unable to cope with the situation. Tang Yunying turned to Ji and explained that if the child was so clingy, it was probably because he lacked a sense of security, so they should give him more attention and time to reinforce that feeling. It was late at night, and he was still sitting at his computer, contemplating how best to keep her company. Ji realized that he should be there for her, but he felt like he didn't know the right way to do it. Looking for a solution, he started reading an article that claimed that if they followed her instructions, they could succeed. The article promised 101 tips for becoming a good father, and he diligently wrote down all the recommendations, hoping they would help him in this important endeavor. The next day, Baby demanded and saw that G was already in the kitchen. She wondered why he was up so early. The man explained that he wanted to make her breakfast and asked her to wait for a while. Doris asked if he was cooking some medicine or something. The first point, to prepare a hearty meal for his child to start a healthy day, had failed. Already in the evening, he was reading her a fairy tale, how the prince looked at the beautiful princess, couldn't help himself, and kissed her. The little girl remarked that it was very romantic. He went on to read that after the kiss, the princess woke up. From himself, G added that the queen had not poisoned the apples enough. Doris was amazed at what she heard. G, realizing his words, hastened to explain that it was just nonsense and tried to turn his attention to the next item on the list. However, the idea of the second item, reading a bedtime story to the child to make him have good dreams, was also unsuccessful. The next item suggested doing crafts to make shared memories. This seemed like a more suitable option, and G decided to give it a try. Next on the list was to blow dry the child's hair before bedtime to make him feel warm and cared for. Doris noticed that lately G had become somehow obscure, something different than usual. At the end of the list, where there were only single crosses, he began to think, why is it so hard to be a good father? Maybe he wasn't suited for the role? Doubts arose in his mind, and he felt unsure, not knowing how to proceed. The little girl saw the state G was in. She ran up to him and asked him what was wrong. 
He replied that his plan to be a good dad had failed. He was a worthless parent. Doris was confused. G thought he had already screwed up and was as useless as that bastard. Doris didn't know what he was talking about. She asked G to go over there. The little girl pointed to the TV where an amusement park was showing. She explained that the little man in the TV said it was the most fun place in the world, and that's why she wanted to go there. He shouldn't be sad. As soon as G looked at the list, everything became clear. After all, the item on the list was about going to an amusement park, and he had been there more than once, so he had enough experience. The decision was made. G said that they would go to the amusement park the next day. He confidently assured her that everything would be fine this time, and that she would feel safe enjoying all the rides and entertainment that awaited them. Item number 30 was to take the baby and head to the amusement park to create happy memories together, so they decided to follow that plan. Upon arrival at the park, they were greeted with a warm welcome, and immediately a sense of fun and celebration was in the air. It was a real eye-opener for Doris. She was thrilled to be surrounded by such a variety of rides and games. G invited Doris to spend the happiest day together. They went on the rides, where Doris asked with interest how to play the game. G confidently assured her that he would show her how skilled he was at various amusements. While they were riding the rides and enjoying the amusement park atmosphere, G tirelessly demonstrated his skills in the games and rides in an effort to make Doris's day unforgettable. They rode many of the rides. He put her in a hoop with ears, and it was the best thing for Doris. At the shooting range, G decided he could do the rest of the list. The 34th item was to win a prize for a child to show off his agility and wit, but it all passed them by. At the end of the event, they were offered to take the prize for participating in the event, but they declined. G tried to keep calm and not panic, for he still had one backup plan. At the same time, Doris was cheerfully running around the perimeter with her toy despite what was happening. 36 point. When a child is frightened, immediately protect and support them. G was trembling with fear himself, but asked Doris not to be afraid, because he would protect her. A haunted house in a children's amusement park shouldn't be scary. But one moment they were startled and G fainted. He didn't realize how it was that all his plans had failed miserably. On the way, the little girl noticed how the little boy was with ice cream. G noticed this and said that how could anyone come to the park and not eat ice cream? He asked Doris to stand in line, promising to return soon. The girl played with her toy while she waited, immersed in her little worries. Suddenly, she was noticed by a man who was also with the child. But unintentionally, he gave the little girl a little squeeze. The indignation among the people was growing. Entering without cue was perceived as the highest degree of impudence. Lively conversations and shouts of indignation filled the air. Suddenly the boy who was with the man began to play with unusual amplitude, and one of his blows accidentally struck Doris. She informed him that he had accidentally hit her and therefore should apologize, to which the boy replied that she herself had said it was an accident, which meant that it was not his fault. The man reported that the girl was so pampered, but suddenly G intervened in the situation, asking what had happened. The entire atmosphere of tension centered around them as everyone paid attention to what was happening. He forcefully asked if there was any problem with his daughter or if something had happened. If that was the case, the man should discuss it with him directly. Chen handed the ice cream to Doris and asked what was wrong. The little girl explained that the man barged in without cueing and then his son hit her in the face with a toy and didn't apologize. He stroked her head, trying to calm her down. G turned to the master and asked if his son could have apologized first. He believed that respect for others began with understanding and apologizing for mistakes. However, the man's reaction was unexpected. He suddenly lunged at Chen, grabbing his clothes and demanding to see the sight of the wound on Doris. G reacted instantly, pushing the man away and defending his friend. He threw his hands away with determination, not allowing physical violence against his friend and himself. He explained that there were video surveillance cameras, and the one who entered without cue, and the one who hit him, were perfectly visible on them. He said that as soon as he finished apologizing, they should get in line. The man was almost furious. 
G asked if the man wanted to fight or what. If so, it was worth stepping back so as not to hurt the children, but first his son should apologize. A dark aura wafted from G, and as soon as he appeared, the man and his son felt confused. They found themselves surrounded by people who wouldn't let them go anywhere. The man, though with difficulty, finally got his son to apologize, and they slowly withdrew under the disgruntled looks of the people around them. G was relieved when they left realizing that the situation could have developed much more tense if he had been forced to take more drastic measures. On the Ferris wheel, G noticed that the little girl was silent. He didn't realize it was because of that situation. It affected her mood or what. Afterwards, they sat on a bench. G felt he had screwed up again. He was supposed to create happy memories. Now he blamed himself for leaving her there alone. Doris asked if he really believed her words since he had stood up for her. Chen stroked her head and replied that he would not let anyone hurt her. Doris's memories. The man asked why she was stealing other people's things, to which Doris explained that the boy had put it in her bag. The man turned to Preferum Stahl and said that he knew that their school educates children from orphanages, but that he shouldn't let this child influence other children. But Doris kept saying that it really wasn't her. But no one believed her. The other girls were discussing her. The mother of one of them reported that Doris was a savage that no one had raised. She didn't even confess to stealing. What a pity she didn't have a father to protect her. Now the little girl understood who Daddy was. She informed G that it was okay because she felt so happy. The little girl went on to say that the amusement park was a lot of fun, and most importantly, G was protecting her as Daddy, so she was super happy. She hugged him, saying that he looked so cool when he chased away the bad uncle. G asked that he's really so cool. After looking at the list, he made the decision to just throw it in the trash can without wasting any more time thinking about it. G, interested in entertaining Doris, asked her what else she would like to play or try. Afterward, they enjoyed ice cream, allowing Doris to take many pictures during their adventures. After watching the fireworks and going on a few rides, they both remembered the day as a wonderful time together. Afterward, they returned home. G said that he was so tired that he couldn't even move. He realized something was wrong. He was on his way to take a shower. He couldn't understand why she still didn't feel safe or anything. Perhaps he didn't have enough information about what had happened to her earlier to fully understand her condition. G felt that his affection for her was only growing stronger, so he tried to be even closer and support her tighter. His heartfelt feelings only emphasized her charm in his eyes. After two months of training, his cooking skills had improved to edible food. He prepared the meal and called Doris to the table. G noticed that the little girl was looking at something so intently. He wondered what she was looking at so intently. He went to the window and saw the reason. He noticed that the children were playing with snowballs, and he wondered if she wanted to play with them. After all, although they always spend time alone, young children like to socialize with their peers. However, G realized that it was important to consider her wishes as well. In fact, at this time, Doris was thinking about the fact that there was so much snow and how it looked like ice cream. These thoughts made her happy and she was immersed in her childhood fantasies despite the cold and G's serious musings. He didn't understand why she was so sad. After all, he must remember how she used to be shunned. But the little girl thought that G wouldn't let her eat it when it was cold. While eating, G asked if she was bored. When he was working, she was bored alone at home, to which the little girl replied that no, because she watches cartoons and fluffy lumps play with her. They took matters into their own paws. She loves her current life. She has G and a warm big house and lots of delicious food, and then the little one added that she just misses Annan a little. He is her only best friend. They met in the forest when he heard his tale. A stray animal she met in the forest, he was very surprised. She endeavored to help him heal his wound, but he backed away, not allowing her to get too close. To all appearances, he was wary and cautious. Since this was their first encounter, she urged him not to be shy. She later learned that Anan had gotten injured in a fight with a bear for food, which explained his wariness and caution. 
Chen was shocked. Fighting a bear for food was not something a small animal could do. His imagination was playing out. Doris went on to say that he was bullied and that Anon was so good, always playing with her. Her only true friend turned out to be this animal. He didn't have parents either, but the principal wouldn't let him be taken in, so they saw each other outside. Now that she was here, Anan must be sad without her. That thought hurt Doris's heart. G comforted her by telling her that they would go out to play after they ate. He promised to take her to the park where she could make many new friends, and promised to always be there for her, protecting her from her abusers. Asking her to walk slowly and carefully so as not to have an accident, G himself watched her every step carefully, ready to support her and keep her from falling if necessary. But suddenly, an animal jumped on her, and she fell. It was Anne Anne. The little girl asked how he got there. G asked what she had said about the little dog or what. G suggested she get up first, because she might catch a cold and reached out his hand to help. Suddenly, the animal turned into a boy and asked who he called a dog. Anan hugged the little girl and ordered him not to touch her. Anan thought that G had lured Doris into this world by trickery. He asked him not to play dumb because he smelled magic and G was not from this world. Anan continued to ask why he brought her there. Doris explained that Anan had made a mistake because she had accidentally touched the magic circle and fallen there and G had taken her in. She inquired how he'd gotten there. Anan said that she hadn't come to see him for a long time and he thought that the principal had locked her away again. He furtively looked for her in the nursery but didn't find her so he followed her scent and discovered the magic circle. G noted that he had a great sense of smell and said he wasn't a dog. Doris turned to her friend and reported that she was so cool and hugged him. This embarrassed Anan. He expressed his willingness to help her up and offered to go home, explaining that since he'd already found her, it was time to leave the place. He assured her that he knew where the magic circle was, so there was no reason to worry. These words dumbfounded G. He asked how they should get back and headed towards Anon to support him, but suddenly he collapsed. G raised his hands in a gesture of defense and assured that he had nothing to do with what was happening. Doris, hearing this, asked interestedly what had happened to him. Chen touched Anon and explained that he had a fever. It was obvious. He was already home. Doris sat by her friend's bed. G came in and said it was late and she should go to bed and he would look after him. The little girl rubbed her tired eyes and explained that she didn't want to sleep. He petted her and informed her that babies should not go to bed late. He would take care of him. That's when the baby gave in. She asked to be notified if Anan woke up. Anan kept saying that he would protect Doris. G noted that even when he is sick, he tries to be brave. At breakfast, the little girl quickly finished her meal, explaining that she was full and was going to see if Anan woke up. G was confused, not realizing what was happening to him. He didn't want the baby to wake up because when he did, he would take Doris with him. However, G didn't want her to leave anymore. Suddenly, Doris's voice was heard, noticing that Anan had woken up. The boy explained that he was too weak and had fainted, but now he was fine and they could go. G immediately intervened and informed her that he was sick and it wasn't safe to take her away like that. Doris informed her friend that she didn't want to go back. He asked if she wanted to go home or something like that. The girl explained that she didn't want to go back to that cold environment where things were very different. G, being a father, understood her and provided his home. After all, she is his daughter and he loves her for a reason. G emphasized that he was aware of how Doris had often been the victim of bullying and that it wouldn't happen to him. Anan explained that he was tricking her and pointed at Chen. He hadn't expected the man to have so cleverly twisted her around his finger. Who's daddy? That's no good. Doris was proving that G wasn't that kind of person. He was different. Anyway, she's not coming back. Her friend asked if she wasn't the one who said they were friends. He was surprised to realize that she also, like his dad, didn't want to be with him. G noticed how similar they were in their desire for independence and freedom. G mentioned that An An could stay with them and asked how she would feel about such an idea. 
He felt that it would be the best thing for Doris and Anon to be together and feel protected and cared for. Subscribe to the channel and put a like so I'll know that you like this story. And don't forget to click on the bell to not miss my videos.